In today's video, we will take a look at two Smart Carp 2s. That was a terrible pun. Alright, so I have the pleasure of holding two uh, smart carps from the second generation. On one side we got a 36 millimeter, and on the other side we have a 28. The entire smart carp range is available on my website that's scootershop.com. I put a link in the description down below. The large body is used for the range from 36 through 40 millimeters. This 36 I will use on a very high performing 190cc Vespa motor. But let's talk more about the Smart Carp. Technology Elevated uses a patented inverted egg Venturi profile, which results in better throttle response throughout the entire RPM gauge. Today I just want to talk about the 28mm. When you order this carburetor, it's important to indicate what engine it is for, what specific modifications have been done. The reason is Technology Elevated builds these carburetors to spec. So for this, for example, this is for 1978 P200 with modifications that I indicated when I ordered. Aside from the carburetor, you also get a manual that has all these specs marked on the back and when the carburetor was made. Do not be a man and throw this away. You will really need this manual. The carburetor body, the float bowl, and the cap are all machined from billet aluminum. I suspect due to the machining process the carburetor body consists of two pieces that are bolted together. There's a gasket in between. Everything you need on the carburetor is on one side, which is a fuel inlet, a choke and your idle adjustment. The choke actually uses Mikuni parts, so you can get any Mikuni aftermarket cable choke or whatever, and it will work. The bell mouth takes most aftermarket air filters, there's nothing too specific about it. The only thing, you cannot cover up these two holes. I'll get back to these just in a bit to explain what's going on in the float bowl. And on the opposite side, there's nothing. Um, which is great for Vespa engines if you use a pointing forward intake because everything you need is pointed towards you. The carburetor cap is held in with three Allen bolts. Once that off, you get to the heart of what makes this carburetor, which is not the slide, well, it does, but the metering rod. The Smart Carb is a metering rod carburetor. There are no jets it is only the taper and position of the metering rod that defines your air to fuel ratio. This eliminates all need for a plethora of jets to have around the shop. There are different metering rods, but your base adjustment from the factory has to be way off for you to actually get to use a different metering rod. What is great about these metering rods is they're made from stainless. They basically do not wear out. They have a little thread on top, which is used to adjust the height of the metering rod using this knob on the top. The float bowl is also made from billet aluminum, is pressurized. It is not vented towards the atmosphere. These two holes I showed you in the bell mouth, they vent into the float bowl through these holes and they pressurize it. That way, atmospheric changes automatically compensate fuel to air ratio. Not having to mess with choke pilot, idle jet, atomizer, needle position, needle, really simplifies the end user's experience with this product. Now to adjust the carburetor, you have to raise the slide, which you obviously do with your throttle cable when it's on the bike. Then you push down this knob and you hear these clicks. A click to the right means the 
metering rod is raised and the bike runs richer. To the left it is lowered and the bike runs leaner. This is basically it for a basic introduction of the carburetor. Now it is time to put it on a motor and test it out. To mount it on the 208 I use the Polini intake with a little spacer to help with more clearance. This is a Polini intake issue, not really a smart car problem. Today's video is brought to you by untied shoes and socks with my dog's face on it. The idle initially wasn't really adjusted so I took a couple of kicks to get it right. But as soon as the idle was there... Now the next step is take the motor, put it back in the frame, then do the final tuning. Before we get there, there are a few things that I did to this motor that I'm going to show you in the next video. Until then, don't forget to comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you want a smart carp yourself, follow the link down below. Don't forget to indicate your engine and your engine specs when you put in the order.